God, many of you all would not be here today had not God ordered your steps. I don't want us to get it confused and think just because we are driving and not walking that he can't order. We make some things so complicated that are extremely simple. Sometimes God is talking to us in order to justify our own way of thinking. We complicate stuff. So if you're here today, trust. God ordered that you be here. And that also means that there's something that God desires for you to get and to give. So we should not be in a hurry to leave until we have given or received what God has ordained for us to give or to receive. There is a word from the Lord today. This is a topical message, so there is not one verse. Um, but I will say that if you wanted a foundational scripture, it would be Proverbs chapter 22. You don't have to stand, it's just one verse. Proverbs. Chapter 22, just one verse, and I'm going to read it. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Somebody shout amen. amen. <laughs> Today, uh, some of y'all who do sold out service, You've already heard this, <laughs> um, but I needed to close out the series on tithing and giving, and so we're going to do that today, if y'all don't mind. So why don't you bow your heads all over the building? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come with a praise on our lips. Worship in our heart, seeking that you might meet us in this place called Christ Missionary Baptist Church. Father, we know that we know that we don't know what everyone is burdened by in this building. But we know that you know. You know all things. And so we're appealing to you today that in this moment, you might enter this space and touch each and every soldier in this room at the very point of their need. Walk through the pew. Use the word today to answer big questions that someone might have. Use the word today, the sermonic moment today to shed light in darkness in someone's life. God, break some things up. Put some things back together. Slam some windows shut. Open up some door. And up, in some instances, open up some garage doors of understanding. So that your word might illuminate the lives of these your people don't allow us to come into this building today and to walk out the same way that we came in use my mouth use my tongue, use my mind move me out of the way so that your word might go forth boldly it's in Jesus name we praise you let every heart say amen, amen. say amen one more time amen. all right if you have your uh, something to write on or to write with, 
there is somewhat of a title to today's teaching. If you got something to write on or write with, you don't. Y'all, these little blessings are just everywhere. It's everywhere. They're everywhere. All over the pews. The floor. I still see them. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just ask somebody. What's he talking about? Blessings. <laughs> ask somebody. They'll tell you what we're talking about. Blessings everywhere. Amen. All right. I'm going to try my best to expedite this because I do realize we've got a lot to do. And so if you have something right on to write with today's teaching is your tithe, your tithe, your tithe is your training. Your tithe is your training. And believe you me, I want today to be the last time, at least this year, that I have to deal with this subject of giving and tithing. Jesus talked about it a whole lot. Uh, and so, quite naturally, I should. Uh, so I'm going to do this, and this is the last in this series, and we should be able to move on to some things that make you feel better. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> That's not what I'm commanded to do. So I'm just joking. We're going to preach in season and out of season. It's a two-edged sword. All right. Today we're talking about your tithe is your training. And uh, I mentioned that we had a, a few children in our church who had started tithing a couple of weeks ago. And that uh, really excited all of us. Um, and so if you don't mind, let me go back real quick and give us uh, uh, overview again of what we've talked about with regard to what a tithe is. All right, what is a tithe? And if you remember from uh, messages from the past, we have talked about the fact that the tithe came out of at least the book of Leviticus, chapter 27, verse 30, where the Bible says, A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit. From the trees belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees belongs to the Lord. See, y'all get that twisted. Everything. You sitting on a pew that was made from something that came from the ground. You wearing some clothes that were made from something that came from the ground. Right? Are y'all following even the air you're breathing came from something that's in the ground. This is rough, isn't it? Yeah, I'm tired of everything. Don't get it twisted, right? The car you drive came from something that came from the ground because all of that belongs to the Lord. So a tithe is everything from the land, all right? Well, the money's in the bank. The money ain't even printed on something that didn't come from the land. Huh. Jesus. The word tithe means, remember this, you can write this down, a tenth part, a tenth part. That means 10%. And for Israel, you got to understand that uh, the tithe of a tenth part was really only the start of their giving. There were actually, biblically, three tithes that were collected from Israel. The first was to support the priests and the Levites. You can write this down. Numbers chapter 18, verse 21. Numbers chapter 18, verse 21. The second was for sacred celebrations. That's out of Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23. Deuteronomy 14, 23. And a third collected only once every three years to support the poor the orphans and the widows. That was out of Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 28 and 29. Are y'all catching this? Amen. So the actual percentage was more like 23% as opposed to 10%. Right. 
So the tithe in and of itself was just a beginning for them. Now, let's slide to what we've been calling grace giving. Anybody ever heard that term grace giving? Raise your hand if you heard it. So most of y'all haven't heard this this deep. Some of y'all have, some of y'all have not. What is grace giving? The Bible helps us to understand that Jesus was clear that he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. Write this scripture down. Matthew 5, 17, where the Bible says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. All right. And so in the early church, there was no idea that, oh, Jesus is here. Now let's just abolish everything that we've learned before. He said, I didn't come to abolish everything. I came to fulfill it. Right. And as it relates to the tithe, it was the early church wasn't sitting back saying, oh, well, Jesus came. Grace is here. Now we ain't got to give no more. We ain't got to. We don't have to support the poor. We ain't got to support the widow. We don't have to support the orphans. All for one and one for all. It's not what the idea was. Right. They didn't think, oh, we don't have to give a tithe anymore. They didn't just, they didn't, because Jesus came back, they didn't just sit back and say, okay, well, okay, we're going to give a tithe, but how much do we give? Maybe we should give less than 10%. Maybe we should give, see, they didn't do that. That's not the early churches. That's not their mentality. And so the question has to, has to be answered, how did we get to a place where we question our giving and our tithe? How did we get so twisted? Am I missing it? All right. Now I understand. I says, "Well, I understand. My name ain't Pastor Dollar, <laughs> and I do get that. That could make one go, oh, that's ironic. <laughs> I get that, but it shouldn't. I shouldn't feel the way I do. Anybody feel a certain way about politics right now? Come on. You didn't get there just by accident." You've been watching stuff and you've been listening to stuff and you've been seeing stuff and you've been adding up and you're like, this just don't feel right. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? There's some things going on in your life and it ain't just politics. Just don't feel right. I don't know about you, but when a police officer pulls behind me, I just don't feel right. I didn't get there by myself and I'm not making this up. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all gonna read an article. I'm, I'm writing an article for the op-ed for the, for the Indie Star. Y'all gonna read it one of these days. And it's gonna help you understand that we don't feel the way we do by accident. And right now, when it comes to church and money, something don't feel right. It just doesn't feel right that we have that we should have to defend what the Bible has taught for centuries. I'm just saying I don't understand, but 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 we need to answer this question: How do we get to a place where when we bring up giving and we bring up tithing, everybody's so touchy feely? People get aggressive and they get all defensive and they get they, they get they get all antagonistic. And I'm just trying to help y'all understand that Jesus never said, by the way, now that I've introduced the dispensation of grace, no one needs to worry about tithing anymore. He never said that. How did we get here? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Somehow today, among even church folk, tithing is associated with the question, am I supposed to give? When the, okay, when the government don't ask. Anybody notice that you need to go to the license branch and get a new driver's license for how to drive on the streets today? So many chuck holes that you got to know exactly how to drive just to keep tearing up your car. Why? They took your money. They didn't ask. And you're sitting around trying to figure out why the schools are the way that they're taking your money. They not asking. You're trying to figure out why all these people on the streets, we need a mental health institution to help these people. They taking your money. Why? I don't know. Make it fun. I'm just saying, why are we confused when it comes to church? We get here, everybody just get all twisted. 
and even in the church. Should I give on the gross or should I give on the net? Let me leave that alone. Here's a problem. The problem with all of these thought processes, processes is that it assumes with all of these questions that tithing by the Old Testament standard was relegated to simply a checkbox and that's it. Okay, here's what, that, what I mean by that. In other words, we are taking our mentality and our understanding and we're overlaying that on what God's intentions were and what the, oh, the church of Israel, what they were doing. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? What the Jews were doing, what the Israelites were doing. We're taking our way of thinking. We think they drove Lexus. Well, well, uh, right? On, we think they drove Fords. Come we on. think they lived in homes like, no, they didn't. And so their understanding of what they did then is not the same. And so it's important for us to understand, right, by getting rid of all of those distractions, exactly what was meant. And where do we go? We have to go to the Bible for our understanding. The the book of Psalms says uh, in in, in, uh, Division 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I don't know about you, but what that tells me is that everything belongs to the Lord. The earth and everything in it. That's what the word says. And so that church interpreted everything according to it being the Lord. I got to be careful how I treat you. You know why? Because you belong to the Lord. I got to be careful how I treat my car. Why? Because it was a gift from God. I got to be careful what I do with my kids because they don't belong to me. They belong to the Lord. Be careful how you treat what belongs to God. But first, you got to have the right mindset. What you got in chores? I don't care what the label says on the inside. I don't care how much you spent for it. I don't care how many years you got that degree. God says if I gave you the ability to get it, I intend for I intend to reap a reward or return for what I've deposited on the inside of you. So the knowledge that you have ain't yours. You catching it? What you know don't even belong to you. God says I gave that to you so that you can use it. For me. Yeah. Come on. Because it's mine. That's my brain in you. Yeah. Are y'all catching this? And so we can't assume that the early that, that the Israelites were thinking the way we think today. Oh well, you know, I don't know how much I maybe I don't want it. No, they were reading the Bible. They were believing. Well, anybody ever anybody ever seen these folk from the Middle East? Right? With the Quran and y'all getting what I'm saying? With the Torah. These folks, you you ever seen these cats? Right? They get down, right? And they have the the scrolls in front of them, and they cross it on, and they do like this. Mm -hmm. And then they read, 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 read. How often do you pick up your Bible and read? I got some of you that spend more time reading stuff on Facebook than reading your Bible. Confusing folk. Uh-huh. These people believe what the word of God said. Uh-huh. I can't be mad at these extremists. I can be mad at what they do, but I can't be mad at them. Because if we were as religious as they were, uh-huh. this church would be full right now. I'm just saying, how do we get so twisted when the Bible tells us that what we have isn't ours, it belongs to God? They weren't given because somebody was making them give. They saw Cain and Abel. They were like, oh no, I ain't going out like that. What I bring to God better be right. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right, all right. So when we start talking about grace, Giving and tithing, all right? We cannot be careless. I'm going to use some words like this. Careless. We cannot be sloppy with our thinking about what we give and why we give what we give. What this does is it leads to us rationalizing reasons not to commit. I, I know, not to commit at the least and not to do anything at the most. Yeah, because there's so folk. When you find a reason, 
You hang on that thing. Right? And that's where you start before you, you like, like in the jungle, you're going from one rationale to the next rationale. You're swinging on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to give y'all some examples. This is, this is some actual examples of what some folks are saying. Well, 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 Pastor, see, since I put gas in my car to get to church, uh, shouldn't that count toward my tithe? Yeah. No, this is some actual stuff some folks have said. My kids are gifts from God, so since I pay for their education, then shouldn't that count towards my giving? Isn't that being a good steward? Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm not making this. This is some actual examples in quotations. I use my smartphone to look up scriptures. So should my cell phone bill figure into my financial career? This is actual Christian folk. Y'all catch me? This, watch this. So this is, this is where this gets us to. This gets us to messy, careless, baseless, and cloudy conversations. And the problem is, is that you can find somebody at the water cooler who will agree with you. You can find somebody who will tweet and hit the heart on your tweet. You'll find somebody who will say amen to your mess. You'll find somebody who will share your stupidity. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You'll find somebody who will agree with you and give you the thumbs up. I like that. And you say, well, okay. Since they like what I'm saying, I must be right. Well, have you drugged that through the word of God? All right. Have you compared what, the way you're thinking and what you're doing to the word of God? Okay, I wasn't going to say this. But most folk in the church right now, the reason my church is not moving is because of pride. Right? It's just because of pride. Right? There's some folk, you sitting there looking at me right now. You, the reason why you ain't inviting folk to church because you mad at me. Some of y'all ain't giving because you mad at Dr. Some of you ain't inviting people to church because we in church too long. That's pride. You can't get out of the way so that God can get the glory out of the gifts that he's given you. And don't realize that as long as you're allowing pride to drive your decisions, as long as you're allowing ego to drive your decisions, as long as you're allowing anger to drive your decisions, you ain't hurting God, you're hurting you. Because I already told you up here, I said God has prepared blessings for you every single day. But if you ain't going out blessing nobody else with what gifts God has given you, that means that every time you go to the wall and you ask God for a blessing, he throws a blessing to you, you don't get it because you're blocking your own blessing. I'm just saying, how do we get to where we just thinking messy? I think we're going to just go on and just create a ministry of messiness. And just let folk just join it. And so, and so all of this sounds good. Everything I'm saying sounds good to somebody who's searching for a reason not to give. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I mean, when you rationalize giving anything to God, you have in essence rationalized giving everything to God. Y'all catch this? All right, so y'all like, okay, I'm going to get that. Okay, so, so, so far, you know, all it takes is this much. Yeah. This much, right? You stay, stay at home one Sunday. And then you look up and you say, oh, that was easy. You know, I'm still here. I still got a job. My car's still out there, right? Still, you know, cool. Next week, it's a little easier. It's a little more easier. Or, you know, hey, right? And then you go, man, that was easy. Some of y'all, it start with Bible study. I ain't going to Bible study. I'm cool. Wow, that was easy. Man, I'm still here. God ain't took me out. Right? Still got a job. Still working. You know, catch it? I'm going to take a little bit. Right? Oh, I don't get it this week. I don't support this week. I don't pray for nobody this week. I don't share this week. And next week, get a little easier, a little easier. Before you know it, you ain't doing nothing. Ain't doing nothing. Right? See how that works? So when you rationalize giving anything, in essence, you rationalize giving everything. Because as soon as it becomes easy for you to hold back this much before you know it. (laughs) 
And so I want to answer the question today. Could it be that grace giving, which I define like Jesus came back, he extended his grace, people gave because they, they, uh, they were so overwhelmed by the grace of God. God, the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. They were so overwhelmed by the grace of God that they gave, right? They gave, not out of instruction, not out of just obedience, they gave because God was good to them. So it became bigger than the tenth. It became bigger than a number. It became bigger than your first. It became God has been so good to me that I am obligated to make sure that the ministry of God continues to move forward. That's grace giving. So could it be that grace giving is not in competition with tithing? All right. Could it be that tithing is a vehicle to teach us how to Grace give. Yeah. Yeah. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about because you don't just give 10%. You give, you find a need and you meet it. Yeah. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Uh, and I'm not even I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not gonna tell you about the checks that I've had to write. I'm not even gonna go there. Some of y'all know. Because it's not a, that's not what it's about. What it's about is if there's a need, we meet it. Yes, sir. Right? I gave y'all an example. Pastor G said, I said, I said, don't put money here, put money there if you feel like it. Yeah. Why? Because my heart is in the place that says, I trust God. Yes. All, right. All right. Now, if you want to get deep, y'all come ask me and I can show y'all how God has been blessing us ever since we made that clear. Yeah. And so what that means is, is that somebody in here, you've been saying, well, I don't want to support. I got it, but I ain't going to support. And you don't understand. God says, I don't need it. Because I'm going to send blessings in, in directions and in ways that, do, that doesn't, that don't, because at the end of the day, while you're trying to hurt the box, you're really hurting you. You get what I'm saying? And, and so somebody else in here knows that Pastor G says, okay, God, you only took, what, four weeks to show me how good you are? And so I started creating mechanisms to be blessings to other people because folk was being a blessing to me. And this is how that thing works. When you give, you receive. You give sparingly, you reap sparingly. It's just that simple. And so, so whatever was going in there is that much compared to what's been coming in other ways. Y'all ain't even seen what God has been doing around here. And it's because we said Let's do it God's way. Yeah, but but how does that work? Uh, and y'all can do this if you want to. Make my tithe record. Make it available. Show everybody. Because me and my wife would tithe when we had it. Tithe when we did it. We tithe when it was when we were loose. We were tied when it was tight. We tithe. When the car was working, we was tithing when it wasn't. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be an example. And if y'all gotta go check the record, check the record. That's what records are for. To be checked. And so I use this example. I gotta hurry up. I used this example the other day about how we get confused. I was telling y'all, I read this post on Facebook um, that this 29-year-old, some of y'all may have seen it, this 29-year-old young lady said, hey, you know what? I'm 29 years old, and I'm not ashamed to say that I've never read the Bible. She wasn't really ashamed. She was just trying to say, hey, I've never read it. I've never gotten into it. I've heard people talk about it. I've heard people quote it. I just never got into it for myself. He said, so I decided I was going to start reading about it. That's what she said. Does anybody see this post? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, nobody saw it. That's fine. So uh, you, you saw it. And so as I was reading the comments, one of the things that I saw, and there was a lot of comments, but one stuck out to me. Uh, and his name, I got his name written down, but his, he shall remain nameless. And I ain't going to put him out there like that. But this one that stuck in my head, it basically warned her that she should be careful to think for herself about what she was reading and not to let others influence her thinking about what the Bible had to say. And let me quote, he says, about uh, issues such as church, scripture, the Bible, God, Jesus, heaven, and hell. And he went on to say, isn't it strange 
Isn't it a strange coincidence that religious people almost always practice the same religion as their parents? Just as their parents practice the same as theirs and so on? This gentleman, I just want y'all to hear this, is exactly why we have to be prepared to defend our own commitment to Christ and his church and his practices. The fact is, and I listen to me, this is my defense. The fact is that the reason why religious people almost always practice the same religion as their parents is because the Bible tells us to do so. I read it earlier. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So while he's saying it's strange, it is interesting. It shouldn't be strange to us. I want my children to follow what I do and not follow what the world does. And in order to accomplish that, I better train them up. Not, Not to only be free, but to be able to manage the responsibility that comes with freedom. Why would I train my children how to be locked up? Why would I train my children how to be irresponsible? Now, let me say this to this young man. Look, bro, if I don't train them up, Nicki Minaj will. If I don't train them up, somebody else will. If I don't train them up, the world will. So who's supposed to train them? Me or them? I ain't got time for the police to do my job. I'm going to knock them over the head. Why? Because I'd rather me knock them over the head than the world knock them over the head. So think it not strange that our children follow us because the Bible tells me to train them up. The other thing he got nerve say. Another thing he got nerve to say. He says, religious people, stop. Religion is not defined by where you are right now. Anybody can be religious. There are some people who are religiously unreligious. Yeah, there are people who are religious atheists. Religious agnostic. Some of y'all are more religious by going to work than you are religious coming to church. So religion ain't the problem. Anyway, you can't have a conversation when you don't start off in the right place. And so his other point was that more that, that children of Christians are following their parents. And I hate to put this out here. But that is becoming increasingly not the case. I got numbers. I'm not going to go through them. I got 72 percent, 21 percent, 2005 Pew Research Study, 2007, 70.6 percent. I got all that. 22.8 percent, 16.1 percent. Bottom line is, is that young people are leaving the church in droves. So don't give me that. All right. Even though we're trying to train up our children, you got social media, you got Instagram, you got Twitter, you got you got what 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 you you got all of these other you got billboards, you got television, you got all of these things trying to hijack what we're trying to do. So we so our kids aren't following all of us. Some of them are leaving the church. Matter of fact, many of them are leaving the church in droves. You look at where we are today compared to where we were 20 years ago, you see a marked difference. Do we not? Am I missing it? (sighs) So that's not true. And so here's why we're teaching about this commitment today, because the millennials and the young people are leaving the church in droves, contrary to popular belief of people like this young man in this post. Each successive generation of Americans includes fewer and fewer Bible-believing Christians. So the fact is that children are not following their parents' religious practices. They are leaving the church, watch this, leaving the faith in the institution. They are leaving in the process. They are leaving their morals. They are leaving their values. They are leaving their commitment to give. They are leaving tithing. They are leaving being parents. They are leaving marriage. They are leaving work. They are leaving graduation. They are leaving the military. They ain't buying homes. They are leaving community service. They ain't investing. You name it. 
So while they're leaving the church and they're leaving what they're being taught, they're leaving everything else too. Why is this? Somebody write this down. Stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. Rather than being trained up, they're being told to think for themselves. Why would I call this stinking thinking? Because during the same period of time of people leaving the faith and leaving the church, we've seen an increase in corruption. We've seen an increase in greed. We've seen an e- increase in the lack of courage. We've seen an increase in ignorance. We've seen an increase in a lack of respect, not just for the institutions, but for each other, for our history, for our background, for where we've come from, for what we've come through. We see a decrease in rationalization. We see an increase of false arguments. We've seen an increase of moral lack and, more, and an increase in decency. So, yeah, let the world think for themselves. Sure. That's what they're doing now. Yeah. And somebody picks up a gun and says, it's my job to decide when you die. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's stinking thinking. Yeah. Are y'all catching this? Yeah. And because we're so fixated on letting people do what they want to do. We ignore wisdom. Are y'all catching this? We ignore the evidence that we have seen over the centuries that shows us every now and then you've got to get down on your knees and pray about it. You've got to see more in your kids and yourself. You've got to see more than the world sees. You gotta believe more than the world believes. You gotta talk to yourself in ways that the Bible tells you to talk to yourself. You gotta believe that you're the head and not the tail. You got to believe that you're above and not beneath. You got to believe that you're a lender and not a bar. You got to believe what the word of God says about you and not what the world says about you. We can't snap our fingers and nod our head while we're being led to slaughter. Wisdom, wisdom is a collection of evidence that proves that the theory is right. I can't ignore the evidence. I cannot ignore the wisdom. I cannot ignore what's right in front of me. It is not wise to have children by multiple partners. It is not wise to drop out of school. It is not wise not to save your money. It is not wise. To live together without a commitment of marriage. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? It is not wise to steal. It is not wise to not go to work every day. It is not wise to take a loaded gun to school. It is not wise to drop a sandbag from a bridge. It is not wise to let your children think whatever or however they want without guidance, discipline, role models. It's not wise. And when you stinking thinking, you ignore the wisdom of the ages. You ignore the wisdom of the word of God. You ignore the wisdom of these saints who are the cloud of witnesses. Who says, baby, let me tell you something. I ain't always look the way I look. I ain't always drove what I'm driving. I ain't always live where I've lived. Let me share some wisdom with you. And so, since we're fixated on thinking the way we want to think and getting what we want right now, we have ignored the body of evidence that has proven itself over time. And that's what the Bible has to say for each and every one of us in this building right now. Yeah, this is rough for me to teach on this level because I'm reading what some of y'all are writing. I'm listening to what some of y'all are saying. And it's as if what's going across this little thingy right here, whatever this music stand, really, what's going across this music stand is not Bible. This is not coming from the word of God. 
It is not wise to ignore what we have learned over the ages. And when we have taught the concept of tithing and sowing and reaping, we do so because it is wise. It's wisdom. It works. This is not a fly by night. And what's so deep is, is if you talk to an investor, they'll tell you the same thing. They'll say, if you put your money in the stock market, and Brother Barry, if you leave it there, <laughs> you leave, if you leave it alone, if you don't get all emotional about the ups and the downs of the stock market, you don't get emotional about it, and you just say, I'm going I'm to I'm stay the course. You'll understand that even with all the ups and downs, it does it like this, but it does it on the way up. And somebody knows that folk that made money during the crisis did so because even when it went down, that was great for them. Wasn't great for us because we ain't in it. Right? We're not in it. They're in it. They saw it. They said, oh, time to buy. They bought everything up. And now what went down is going right back up. And so, wouldn't you think that, that if God was able to create a law that works that way for the world to benefit, that he would create a law that would work for us to benefit too? And then God had a nerve to say, well, let me show you. I'm going to give you an example. And he went and he stuck seeds in an orange. <laughs> he stuck seeds in an apple. He stuck seeds in a watermelon. Right? He even stuck seeds in women. <laughs> he said, I'm going to show y'all how this works. Y'all catching this? Yeah, I'm going to show you how it works. If you, if you eat the seed and spit it out and you don't plant it, you'll get nothing back. If all you're doing is paying your sale bill, if all you're doing is paying your car bill and your mortgage and you're not planting nothing, then you're not gonna get nothing back. He put it, this is this is wisdom. He put it in the word. And he says it works. Anybody ever eaten an orange? Anybody ever eaten an apple? Okay, yes. All right, I'm taking it too far. Uh let me just move forward. Somebody write this down. Don't limit God. In other words, here's the deal. Here's the deal. God says, I want you to be able to reach the destiny that I have designed for you. Period. So if I put you on this earth, I've deposited something in you that the world needs. In other words, that says, God says the world is going to need something. And, and the only way the, girl, the world is going to get that need met, he says, is I'll put you on the earth to satisfy that need. He says, I need you to get there. He said, but I realize that you're not going to get there the way you are right now. So here's what he does. Watch this. Anybody ever seen uh, uh, training wheels on a bike? God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a concept called tithing. And tithing is like training wheels. It's designed for you to put them on and it will help you start moving with a little help. But at some point, God says, you must decide that these training wheels need to come off because I'm not getting what I need to get quick enough. So just to answer your question, if you want to know when to take tithing off, you take tithing off when doing it is limiting you. Ooh. When tithing is not allowing you to get where you need to go. It's time to take them off. Are y'all catching this? And so how do you know when it's time to move beyond tithing to what's called grace giving? Alright? The answer is when, you, when you're when you giving your way to more than just 10%. In other words, tithe is a bad ceiling. But it's an excellent floor. Let me say it again. Tithing is a bad ceiling, but tithing is an excellent floor. It's not a good place to stop, but it's a great place to start. Just like training wheels, it'll help you get going. But at some point, 
You got to make the transition because it's not going. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to use my life as an example. All right. We got the record. Boom, 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 boom. Hiccup. Boom, 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 boom. Hiccup. Boom, 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 boom. Y'all catching that? And then we got to the place where it was like, okay, it's time to go beyond that. Come on. Right? September of last year. Y'all don't know nothing about that, but that's when I started having a conversation. I said, this is where my heart is. Let's make that, that, that shift. And so the finance committee began to make the shift. He was like, oh, Brother Dave is still sitting here trying to figure it out. <laughs> right? Brother Jerry Becker, he up there laughing now because he know we trying to figure it out. How can we let our parents do this? How can we let our parents do this? Well, there's nothing they can do about it because my heart has moved into a new place. Y'all catching this? I'm using my life as an example. That once my heart was in the right place, y'all don't even realize how we started getting blessed around here. Yes, sir. From September forward, stuff was coming. For we was walking to the office the other day. Sister Linda can tell you. We walked to the office yesterday, and there was an envelope on the ground. I picked it up. I said, where did this come from? We don't know. Who put it in there? We don't know. Somebody just dropped out of church and just stuck something through the door, and it fell on the ground. Uh, uh, an envelope with some money in it. Now, now she said, look at God, praise God. But, but can you imagine if folk was doing that at your house? <laughs> what would it be like if you was, just walked to the mailbox? Who put this in here? What is this? Y'all, got, y'all catching this? This is how God works. When your heart is in the right place, I said it before. He opens up a window from heaven. He activates a window and he pours out. You ain't got to do nothing. All you got to do is just come home and open up the mailbox. And there it is. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody said it. Somebody said something the other day. And they was trying to figure out, oh, my God, who said this? Like, what? How? How? I'm just trying to help you. We are being blessed by one person leading y'all in that direction. Now, all I'm saying is, what would happen? Now, I wonder what would happen if more folk would put their heart in that same place and say, you know what? I don't want nobody to go without. Let me find a need. Let me find a need. I'm coming into the church looking for a need. Right? Now, that doesn't mean that I no longer have rent to pay. That doesn't mean that I don't have gas I need to put in my car. That just means that that's not the first thing I think about. The first thing I think about is who can I be a blessing to today? Yeah. Are y'all catching this? Yeah. Who can I help? Whose aid can I come to? How can I be a blessing to somebody? Lord, order my steps in the direction of somebody who needs to be blessed and use me to be an answer to somebody else's prayer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh. I, I, I gotta stop. I gotta stop right there. Y'all catching what I'm saying? And so, let's just be real. Tithing is not the last word in generosity. It's the first word. That's where you start. That's where you get trained. That's where you understand commitment and how to give. Stop questioning a law that has worked for centuries. Y'all catching this? And so, as I said, I don't want it to get personal. It started with me. And now I'm asking that it continue with you. Amen. Amen. That's the end. That's the, the end of today's message. Put your hands together. I'm done. I think y'all get the point. I think you get the point. I'm hopefully done teaching on tithing and grace giving. Um, grace giving is not to eliminate tithing and tithing is not to eliminate grace giving some of you are you're already on the grace giving level I get that you're already doing well beyond that but some of us we haven't started with the training wheels yet and I'm saying it's time it really is time and when you do trust me you will be blessed don't ask me has anybody ever been blessed from just keeping their commitments to God to giving no, put your hands up high. Put them up high. Put them up high because I want somebody who doesn't know anything about what I'm talking about. I want you to look at these people around here and find you somebody to talk to them and ask them. See that? Look at that. She says, I, I want y'all to see me. Come see me. She's trying to let you know. Come see me. 
Let me help you understand what God can do in the area of tithing. That's, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. And my prayer is that somebody walks out of this building different in that area of your life. And that says that you want God to do something. She said, look at God. Don't look at what God did for me. I want to look at what God does for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I want y'all to come to me and say, Pastor, did you, I can't believe that this happened to me. All right? And this ain't all about money. This ain't all about money. Again, we make stuff complicated. This ain't all about money. Okay? God is exceedingly, abundantly above. Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Right? And wouldn't it be awesome if some of us would begin to praise God in advance of the blessing? Oh, I said something. Y'all didn't go there. It's all good. Again, one more time, put your hands together for God. Not a shout your kind of message. Just something to make you think. The doors of the church are open. I invite you to stand all over the building. If you're here today and you heard the word go forth and even for you yourself, you're saying, man, 